Welcome to episode five of the New Era podcast, where we dive into the stories and insights of remarkable individuals shaping today's business landscape. In this episode, I am beyond excited to be sitting down with Camilla Rainsworth, an extraordinary entrepreneur, business consultant, and honestly, she's one of the most amazing women that I've ever met. As the founder of Successful Ventures, Camilla's fearless entrepreneurial spirit and unwavering determination have propelled her to great heights. With her invaluable experience as a finalist on The Apprentice and her current role as a business consultant, we explore her journey, the lessons learned, and gain valuable insights into her entrepreneurial mindset. So if you're seeking inspiration, guidance, and a fresh perspective on business, sit back, drive on, whatever it is that you're doing, and get ready to be captivated by my conversation with the incredible Camilla. So, how did your master? Was it a mastermind? Master yeah, class? everyone calls it different things: yeah. mastermind, masterclass, yeah, anything. Yeah, you can call it whatever. It was amazing, That's so okay. so good. It's crazy because I've done a few virtually before during COVID times. Yeah, um, and uh, it's so different having people gathered in a room Isn't all it? at once, all with the same, all with a similar goal of like growing the businesses, and it was re- a really special. Yeah environment actually I loved it you can it. connect with people in such a different way because we did ours mm. a few months back now Amazing. but it was just so different like being yeah. able to speak to people and then I think when they're like in a, in a smaller group they all speak to each other as well yeah I felt like a proud parent yes. towards the end I was like yes guys like bonding and Amazing. then also your jokes land a bit more like they were laughing and when I was doing it on zoom or um my other like virtual podcast that I've done like you tell a joke and it's like oh it's the signal shit or am I just not funny? <laughs> it's like do I re- repeat the joke like I'm, I'm unsure but yeah there was a few laughs so that was good um, and that's because they feel like they have to I know the pressure I was like laugh but I think for me like I love in person like it's always just so yeah. much better um yeah. so it went really really well had um I think I, I was a, I was a bit conflicted because I didn't want to be greedy mm. and be like fill it um so I went with eight people in the end but it was yeah. a really nice personable group yeah. that worked really well anymore and it would have been like well that's three crackers between all eight There's of you no yeah I was a bit what? stingy with the food actually <laughs> yeah but it's one of them isn't it I think when you've got a smaller group you can actually speak to people individually yeah absolutely. whereas when you grow it it's, it's more difficult I, I put something up the other week about that and I was like yeah. in person mm. and smaller groups or mm. in person and bigger groups but I prefer smaller yeah I do as well I like I learn all the names and I'm not very good at names yeah. um despite having lots of friends that are recruiters like or you have you know, ever noticed like if you've got a friend that's a recruiter they say your name all the time like thanks Camilla because they're trying trying yeah. To be personable yeah, but um learn everyone's names like got to know them got to know their businesses and yeah it's a and now that I've done the first one I've actually got a bit of a toolkit that I can replicate so next. I've got another one on the 30th of June so I'm just gonna like see what worked what didn't replicate it and then go from there and then go from there a blueprint yes amazing okay so I know you, but I don't know you as much as I want to know you. Mm. So what is the earliest story of Camilla? The earliest story. So the build up to the gal I am today. Um, So I think growing up, I've always been quite loud and outgoing. But when I was younger, um, less so, I would say, um, I've lived on a farm basically my whole goats. life. Yes, you're a goat enthusiast, aren't you? I love goats. Oh, they are amazing. <laughs> um, I'm always really reluctant now to say the names because they're my password for everything. <laughs> but I'll change it, it's fine. Um, Vincent Van Gogh and Nigel, the, the Huns. So I've always grown up in um, a small town, um, gone to the same school my whole life. So it was quite like small town syndrome I would say and I was desperate to just break out of it really because everyone knows everyone um there was a lot of like gossiping when I was like growing Mm. up I went to an all girls school as well which is like yeah hard different gravy isn't it it's hard I think once you've been to an all girls school you basically like you've got a toolkit for being able to handle a lot of like bitchy situations um and I think that taught me a lot actually um so yeah when I was growing up I um, was always a tomboy. Like, I was known as Goat Girl. That was my nickname. I mean, there are worse nicknames. <laughs> like, are. when my dad found out that my nickname was Goat Girl, he, like, breathed an audible sigh of, sigh of relief. Like, your 16-year-old, go- like, child, is her nickname is Goat Girl. There's a lot <laughs> There's a lot worse you could have than that. Um, so, yeah, I um, and I've, I'm close with my parents. They've always been really um, crucial for me. And then... 
what else? I went to uni and did law. You did law as well, didn't you? Yeah, so I did law at uni. Um, And then after that, I was like, right, I need a gap year. <laughs> so did you finish your degree as well? Yeah, I finished oh it. Oh gosh, we are so sorry. Finished it, hated it though. But yeah. I finished it because I'm the type of person when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah, you've got to get it um, So I just didn't want to have it as like a tab open in my head. Yeah. Um, but I did not enjoy it at all because I've always been very geeky actually. I loved yeah. learning at school. And then sixth form, absolutely loved that as well because you're actually learning subjects that are specific. So you pick three or four, don't you? Yeah. Um, so I think I started to thrive the more you started to narrow down your interests. Yeah. Um, and then at uni, I just did not enjoy it at all. And that's when yeah. I kind of lost my way a little bit, I would say. Like became a little bit like I would be going out three, four times a week, would not show up to 9am lectures. Yeah. And everyone was like, what's going on? Like she's going through the typical goes to uni, goes off the rails yeah. phase. Um, yeah, dyed the hair like dark black. Um, I thought I was black. Yeah, like literally, well, my hair's naturally dark, but yeah. I dyed it black and was like very, was yeah. very intense uh, for that period of time and just lost a little bit of, um, of myself, I guess, really at uni. Mm, I think a lot of people do lose, mm. lose themselves because when you go to uni, you live that life yeah. where you go out and enjoy yourself. And that's why people struggle when they come out of uni yeah. because it's like, I, yeah, I didn't really enjoy it at all. When I look back, I just think, oh, I wasn't happy at all. And my parents have always been like, they've always been quite strict. Mm. So I think then going to union, you've not got parents. Yeah. Um, like it's a, it's a, a really, yeah, kind of like, it's a, it's a tough one for parents. Cause it's like, do you be super strict and then you run that risk yeah. or do you kind of like be a little bit more like lenient? Mm. Yeah, mm. it is a dilemma. Um, and then went and did my gap year in Australia and that recalibrated me. Brought that was the saviour. Genuinely, that the hair went back blonde. I was like, I was just more myself than ever before, I think. And I beca- began to get more inspired um, mm. in that environment. And I think that, that that's a really crucial point to mention, actually. If ever you're feeling like you've lost your way or you're feeling unmotivated, um, sometimes the thing that you need to change is your environment. 100%, 100%. So what uni did you go to? Manchester. Is that why you're now back in Manchester? Because no, you-, no. <laughs> you would never know that I went to uni in Manchester because I still literally put like Barry's, which is five minutes round the corner from me in my sat nav. I don't know where anything is in Manchester. I've lived in Manchester now, accumulatively. Obviously I had a separate like a uh, three year gap, but I have no idea where anything is or I'm always heading the sat nav. Genuinely, my friends are like, you've lived here five years. I'm just not very good at like, obviously I was 20 minutes late this morning. That's mainly down to lack of, uh, (laughs) lack of um, being able to navigate anywhere. It's a really bad skill that I'm I'm yet to polish. Um, So yeah, I'm in Manchester now and I I love Manchester much more. I think I needed to write the experience that I had at uni. I think part of me was like, let's do it again. And let's do it now when I'm a little bit further down the line. I've got my shit yeah. together a bit more. Let's see what the city can do for me because it did not do anything for me back in uni. Yeah, because do you feel that being in Manchester has helped you with like certain opportunities? Mm, you're in the city? Absolutely. Mm. London, not for me. It's too busy. I'm too yeah. polite to live in London. It's like, so rude. People bump into me and then I apologise and then I'm fuming the rest of the day. Honestly. Or my ego, get well, I get humbled all the time because I'm like, good morning, how are you? blank so couldn't do London so I thought right let's go in between let's do um Manchester and I do think that there's opportunities if you want to network you can um from a fitness perspective there's loads of studios all of that co-working spaces um apartment buildings that also double up as like a bit of an office space yeah so yeah I've, I've got it good at the minute but it's not like I moved to Manchester and had the life that I had now, like when mm. I first moved, like I was in an apartment building that was not nice at all. In fact, there was a Facebook group that all the residents were in. And it was at this point that I thought, time to move out. One message in the group was, um, go, like, guys, just be careful because a homeless man's just got into bed with me. So that was cute. Um, yeah. yeah, but number two, um, someone was saying, oh, don't go in the bin store. Someone's um, doing heroin in the in the bin store. So I was like, right, time to look at somewhere else. I think I remember you moving here because I remember you yeah. 
<laughs> there was one when you had a balcony, didn't you? Yes, that was that. That was the um, uh, that was the place. Yeah, it was. I used to have it had a balcony, and you could see. It was so funny because it was like on the main road as you come into Manchester, and I had a balcony, but I had I was in a like go through these weird wacky fitness stages. I was in the trampolining era there. Don't know whether you followed me there. There's been all sorts, and I used to have an outdoor trampoline, and I'd bounce on it outside. So people, my friends would say they'd be coming into Manchester. They just see my head bobbing above the balcony. On the trampoline, how funny! Oh, literally, that, that is you. That's that so is me, you, isn't it? Oh like, God. welcome to Manchester, where everyone trampolines on their balcony at age twenty-five. I think I was when I moved there. So, it's been a journey. A journey. It's been tumultuous, but a good journey though. Yeah, a good journey, absolutely. Yes. Because I, I met you before you. No, I, I met you in person when you moved to Manchester. Yes, you but did. I met you before. Yeah. Online, virtually. Yeah. Social oh my God, media. we're MSN friends. We are MSN friends. I enjoy you know that because I met you at an event for one of my clients, didn't I, in person yeah. properly. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you just meet people. And this is like a thing that I say to people all the time. Like, I think we've moved away from it a lot more. But girls these days, I do think there's been a shift in that, like, we kind of support the sisterhood a lot more than it used to be. 100%. The narrative has changed. Whereas it used to be, if you saw someone that you got on with, you'd get on with them, but then you'd leave it there. Now, yeah. I have no qualms in messaging someone and being like, do you want to go for a coffee? Yeah. feels like you're asking someone out on a date. But it I'd, does, doesn't I, it? Yeah, I try and, like, ask, like, a girl out for a, a friend date yeah. if they align with me, like, once every, like, every two months or something. Yeah. I like to build my network and just see if I can draft anyone in. But it brings opportunity as well because I, I met you that day. You invited me to that event. Mm. I met Chloe at that event. Exactly. And I've not left you since. Yeah, you see? Today. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And that's a you know testament to just yeah. put yourself out of your comfort zone because I don't know whether then you were doing loads of like oh, events and all. things. It's there we are. Yeah. Did you come on your own? I can't remember. Omi came. Yeah, Omi oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I never used to really like going places like on my own. And now, God, I go everywhere, everywhere on my own. I go on holidays on my own. I like go to last trip that I did was the Scottish Highlands, which was a nine hour drive on my own. Didn't even have the dog then. So I literally drove nine, nine hours, hours to be in this little spaceship for three days, completely on my own I in the middle of that. nowhere. So yeah, yeah, that's like the biggest thing that I've learned probably, just being comfortable with your own company. So what advice would you give to someone that wants to go somewhere on their own but mm. is worried to do so? Yes, I think a lot of the time people are worried because of social constructs, yeah. because like you're a weirdo if you go to a coffee shop and take yourself out for lunch. You're not. People yeah. are intimidated by people people that do that because yeah. they'd never be able to do that and that is a real barrier and it's a shame um, because I read a book not that long ago and it's called Alonement mm. and it's basically um, centered around the premise that we need to as a nation get more comfortable b with being okay on our own mm -hmm. and even like when you're on your phone and you're on your own you're not on your own because you're surrounded by people online yeah I'm talking about when you're literally on a walk where you've got no external and distractions it's and it's just you with your thoughts. You're going to be more motivated. You're going to have more creative ideas and you're going to get to know yourself more. Yeah. Like I cannot implore people to do anything more valuable and it doesn't cost anything. I think that's what it's like when people have to be with people all the time because they don't know themselves. Yeah. And they can never learn themselves. Absolutely. I got to a point last year where I was listening to so many podcasts. I was mm. in the office every single day. I got to a point and I was like, I feel like I can't think for myself because mm. I've listened to so many podcasts. I'm so influenced by what I'm listening yes. to. Yes. So if you ask me my opinion, you don't, I'd tell you yeah. someone else's opinion that I've just listened mm, to. That you've reframed, yeah. absolutely. And I think it's good to like take like bits from different podcasts and then, you know. Go away. Yeah, and, like, go away and have a yourself. thought. Yeah. Like just have a pause. Um, but no one does that really anymore. And I think no. that that's really important to encourage. To just yeah, especially because you're 100 miles an hour. Like mm. we both are with work. Just having that time to just like reflect yeah. is lovely. Um, but you'd meet us and we are quite extroverted. Yeah. Um, but I'm an introverted extrovert. Exactly the same. Like, exactly yeah. And, the same. and it sounds so wishy-washy. Like, I mean, you just want to be both. Like, you're greedy. It's like, no, but I am both. Yeah. Like, I love to be like just chilling with a candle of an evening, yeah. like on my own, like with the dog. It's just, it's just, just the peace. dream. Mm. Just going out and not drinking coming back for like yeah you don't drink a lot do no, you no good no. yeah fab I um I drank on Saturday for the first time in 
like months and months and months because I did the boxing fight. Yeah. I wasn't drinking at all. And I just don't feel like controversial opinion, but I don't think that you can be a drinker and reach your goals. I don't think that those things they can work concurrently. Align. I don't think they align no. at all. You're never, ever going to get to the the maximum that, that you, you can want. get with I alcohol involved. Your- I came to your boxing. Oh, I yeah, you did, didn't you? Two wines. Yeah. I'm not joking. The day after. Yeah. I looked horrific. Yeah. It wasn't even how I felt. I looked yeah. horrendous. Mm. And I was like, nah, it's not. Yeah, it's not, it's not for me. No. But yeah. it was good. How did good. you find that? So good, you know. I think the build-up to it, the whole process aged me about 15 years because it was it was stressful. And I hate using the word stress because I think as a nation, we overuse that word as well. Yeah. Like, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. But that actually was fucking stressful. Sorry, I, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, Chris, yeah, yeah. fine. <laughs> We're all adults. Um, so, yeah, the training process was unbelievably hard that was the hardest bit mm-hmm. and then mentally gearing yourself up to like to punch someone in the face is crazy yeah. but it's punch or be punched you know yeah, it's that, fight or flight You've got exactly to so I just had to get over that but when I was in sparring and when I was training I'd be punching someone and then I'd be like sorry and they'd be like you need to stop apologizing and I was like yeah this no. is what you're here for this is what I'm here for exactly so no that was amazing I'm really glad I did that um, I like to just do things that will challenge me every year. Yeah. So last year was the marathon. This year was the boxing. Um, who knows what next year will be? Uh, but I'm just going to try and relax for the next uh, few months the, of the you know, year. I think that's what I genuinely love about you is every year there is a goal. <laughs> there is a fitness yeah. goal. And, and everyone's like, what? You will genuinely. Do it but... I, I'm, it's not in my nature to to do boxing or like everyone was like, do you want to like get into it more? Do you want to do more fights? I was like, yeah. honey, I'm one and oh now. I'm win. putting that in the bio. Trust me, if I'd have lost, I would not have left the apartment because I am so competitive. Really? It's a joke. Yeah. Do you know what though? You literally, you finished that fight and I was like, oh, everyone was like, oh, they're going out. And I was like, I wonder what she'll do. Mm. You were in the back getting your hair done, yeah. sticking a dress on. I know, I, like, yes, I know, is. I know. And I didn't get ready till, I wasn't ready till 12. Everyone had left. I was like, guys, I'm ready. I'm ready to party. Literally, literally party for 15 minutes, then went home. <laughs> well, you, you were literally there and I was like, look at her. Yeah, look at her go. Her go. No, oh, I, I really appreciated the support actually for that. All the videos, all I can hear is like the screaming. <laughs> like All my friends were like, I don't know what came over me. Honestly. I became animalistic. Literally. In the videos, it's like, batter her. Literally. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, these are my friends who are really nice people. But no you, joke. it's like that innate like desire. I the for... work phone. I was like, this is better quality. Let's stop. Yeah, me. you honestly, that made me laugh so much. You wouldn't have been you if you hadn't messaged me afterwards saying like, best be believing I brought the work phone to get content. No I was joke. like, wow, you're a walking, talking advert no, for your no services joke. right now. <laughs> no but joke. Yeah. So I feel like I talked for hours, but I want to go back to your... I'm going to see your first business. We'll go back yeah. to your business journey and how yeah. that started. Yeah. So I went to Australia, got inspired there because they're quite, like America, we get a lot of our inspiration from these countries that yeah. are um, just a little bit more advanced when it comes to health and well-being. Mm. And Australia, they're re- they're, that, that health is less of a trend, more of an expectation over there. Yeah. Um, and they just did things differently. Like they had wacky branding for health products whereas over in the UK there was still a correlation between like everything was green and being healthy and I wanted to create something that not only was I the customer for yeah. in that I don't drink dairy um but something that was actually it had personality and reflected me as a person as well so yeah. I was inspired by Australia because there was a lot of products over there and we didn't have that yet so I brought that idea and that concept from there to the UK and that's when I just started to um, implement the mindset that I've always had which is if something doesn't exist then why not create it yeah Um, and I think a lot of people are scared of doing that because you don't want to be first because you're thinking well why hasn't anyone done it exactly Mm. but sometimes the reason is because no one's been opportunistic so you just got to go for it Um, so I've done I've done a few things really since then and each thing has you know given me that toolkit for you know, I did all the branding, all the marketing, everything myself. I was basically like every job role you can imagine. Yeah. And that actually set me in good stead for everything that I've done since that. And now being able to help other businesses to to grow. Um, but I tend to now um, narrow my skill set down to like marketing because that's what I love. Yeah. 
the marketing side. Yeah. Things. I'm quite similar to that. I think when I launched the businesses, I loved the marketing side because mm. it's fun, isn't it? Mm. The logistics is stress. Oh, no, it's not for me. The logistics is... Ugh. Yeah, you've got to do it. And I'm glad I have done it because yeah. I've got that string to my bow. Um, but... And you never want to ask someone to do something that you've never done as well. That's another point. Yeah. Um, so good to do it and then delegate from there. Definitely. Are you good at delegation? So when I had gym law, I didn't want to delegate yeah. anything. Yeah. So I launched that and I was like, I just want to keep it all in house because it was all just me. Yeah. Delegated, I got, hired one person and then set up Aventus. Yeah. And when I set up Aventus, I delegated from the get-go. Good. I was like, yeah. if I don't, I won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Whereas now we've kind of brought a few things back in house, but we work with so many different people now. But yeah, yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. But back in the day, I did Didn't. not want to delegate. It was, it was the biggest fear because no one can replace you. Exactly. And, you and no one cares you, yeah. as much Trying as to put you that do. Effort in that you put in. Did yeah. You del- how did you find it, or have you? Um, delegation, not a strong point still now. Like I am quite. I, like, I do like to self-reflect and be self-aware mm. in that, like, for my masterclass, I got my friend to help out. Yeah, I've um, seen that. And she's lovely and she's actually a self-development coach as well. So that actually, that marriage was really good. Yeah. Um, but I need, I said to her, like, I need to pay you. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to say, like, do this, do that, do yeah. that. Um, so I do still struggle to be honest. Um, it's something that's on the list of things to work on along with timekeeping. Yes. We've got a list that's ever growing, but I'm very yeah. self-aware. I know I'm, I know I'm bad at things, you know. But that's good. I think to be able yeah. to sit here and say, I'm crap at this. Yeah. I'm not I good at work. that. <laughs> and I think like that was always something that I always used to say, um, like I'm, I'm not going off on a tangent here a little bit, but when I used to go on dates, like one of my first questions was like, what are you, like, what's your bad habits? What are you bad at? And they'd be like, I really feel like I'm in an interview right now. I'd be like, let's not talk about like the good things. Let's go straight in. Let's literally and like, straight let's, in. yeah, let's. It's important now. Isn't it? And then I'd be like, and um, A-level results, GCSEs. <laughs> uh, the conversion of going from date one to date two was very minor, may I add. The conversion rates were not good because everyone like, just felt like they'd been in the hot seat, like they were on the weakest link. It's like they've like, met the parents already. Exactly. Like, the parents. No, I know. Being. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I am very aware of what I need to work on still now. You don't need to work on that. That's you. It's, yeah. It is also you. Initially. Yeah. No, I just need to, I need to work on being late though. And I need to work on, on I, I need to work on not being late and I need to work on delegation. So, and, delegation. and it's good to talk about these things actually, because I sometimes forget what I need to work on, but now for the rest now of the week. Now you've got to hold yourself accountable to Exactly, because I've said it out loud. Can we cut this bit out? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Accountability is key. It is key. It is key. So going back, so you had... You, I feel like I've followed you for a long time. Yes. Do you know what? It's because I watch you on The Apprentice. Yes. So that's where it's like, that's where it's come from. Love that. Can we go over that? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so how was that experience? Do you think that's made you who you are today? Has it contributed to it? Yeah, I mean, I can't lie. It's definitely, definitely contributed and shaped me as a person. I've always been an Apprentice super fan. Like, I'm a Lord Sugar cheerleader, like, on the show, um he would like say a sentence and because I'd read all of his books, I'd finish his sentences, which he found really creepy, of course, naturally. So he'd say like, um, you know, I grew up and I was selling um, car aerials and I was like, out of your, out of your car. And he was like, oh my God, who's this girl that's like finishing all my sentences at the front? Yeah, that knows you inside out. And he was like, I started my first business and I was like, at 19. (laughs) Um, So really love him. Um, had a business idea at the time. So I thought, why not? But everyone thinks to themselves, like, and I remember thinking this, I thought, I'll go for the audition, but let's be honest, like, it's not going to happen. Like, you just don't think it's going to happen because there's so many people. And if I'd have believed that and not gone for it, then I wouldn't arguably be here now, which is crazy. It's the power of moments. And I think that that was a very powerful moment. Um, stepping out of the comfort zone and just going for it because yeah. then at least you've got skin in the game. At least you can actually complain that you've not been selected. Mm. But if I just complain that I've not been on it and not gone for it, then it's yeah. redundant, really. It's like when people complain about not winning the lottery, but you've not bought a ticket. So how yeah. on earth could you, could ever, you ever win, win it, it if you've not bought mm. a ticket? Um, so... Yeah, that was an amazing experience for sure. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. There was definite ups and downs, like both during and after. Um, But it's made me so resilient. Like the amount of shit I have had in my DMs, like it is wild. Like 
the names that you get called, like how invested people are in your lives, like yeah. on your every move. Um, but I think that's actually really helped me with compartmentalizing life in general. And and it sounds very reductive, but I always say, like, don't take life too seriously. This is from a book. I'm not passing it off as my own <laughs> disclaimer. Um, but I read it and I was like, wow, this is so true. Like, don't take life or yourself too seriously. Yeah. We're all just monkeys with a plan. And I just think that's so good because it's, it's like, true. yeah, it's like you can't get caught up in like people's opinions of you because... Like, it's just see the funny side in it. Like yeah. someone, you're living in someone's head rent free. Congrats. Yeah, literally. And if you think about it, it's the, the risk that you've taken to go on Yeah, there. exactly. And the I would nerves. take it a million times over. And everyone would. Like, well, most people, I would say, like 98% of people would not change it, I'm, I'm sure. I'm not going to lie. So that audition, so I did that audition. Oh, yeah, I remember, actually. I, think, I wanted to die. On yeah. The I'm not joking. It was the most. Yeah. What I can say is I'm not cut out for TV. Really? Um, oh. Did you I would have said that, that thing where you stood on a number and then they call out a number? Um, my memory's terrible. It was like, you stand on a number and they call out a number. My number got called out last and I genuinely think I'm out. Really? I'm not joking. <laughs> I was like, a, oh, really? this is oh, what? So you had to say what your number? You had it was to. Like, it was you stood on a number, and then a number got called out, and I can't remember what you had to say. Still to this day, I have no idea what I had to say, and I have no idea what I said. Okay, but it would have come out like gobbledygook. Okay, horrific. this is actually very interesting from my end, actually, because obviously I've done the apprentice um, audition process, and you did as well. Mm. But it must have changed over the years. But we had to do. I'm probably not supposed to say this, but um, I'm going to say it anyway. Um, so <laughs> you, you, like, they, they try and keep it very secret, like, what goes on, yeah. which I understand, but it sounds like they've changed it year yeah. on year anyway, so it's fine. It was so crazy because they, you had to order yourself in order of, like, most attractive in the room and least attractive. So it was basically no. how you viewed yourself. They were monitoring you. And it was, like, oldest to youngest. So obviously you'd be talking. And yeah. and then sometimes it would be, like, um, who you, like, most successful to least successful and how you viewed yourself. So how difficult is that to do with a bunch of strangers? Because yeah. some people were like, oh, like, you know, and a, a lot of people just went straight down the middle. And yeah. I noticed that none of the middle people got selected or were oh, okay. um, going through to the next stages. Yeah. Um, but also, like, you don't want to be the knob that's at the end, like, yeah. most attractive, like, put yourself at the end. Do you know what I mean? Oh, mm. God, no. So it was brutal, though. The whole process Honestly, was brutal. Hats off to you. Hats off Thank to you. Big time. Because yeah, I did hardcore. the first one and was like, yeah. I was 18, and I remember sitting there thinking, everyone was so confident, and I was like, yeah. I'm doing my degree. I had no idea what yeah, I was yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like... Yeah, see, absolutely. What? And you could go on it again now. You could, you know, doesn't mean that it's the end of it. But rash. Yeah. It's stress a rash. rash. A stress rash. I get them. Yeah, no, but I do, to be fair. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly. I've, uh, yeah, I've managed to curb it a little bit and I blush quite a lot. Like How did I'm you like, curb it? Because I went to the doctors the other day and she told me to do drama classes. Drama I classes. I went to the doctors and I was like, every time I do something, I get like a rush. And she's like, really? you should take up drama classes. So now on a Tuesday, I'm going to go to drama with my 10 year old sister. Love that. I'm not to really. Be, yeah. Can you imagine that. Hi, kids. That reminds me. me. <laughs> yeah. Hobbies, though. It's good to have hobbies, darling. I, can't imagine um, doing drama. I just, um, it used to be when, if I'd get nervous or whatever. And um, now I tell myself, um, when you're nervous and when you're excited, it's, the exact same response that your bod body yeah. gives out. So I just reframe it and I reprogram myself and I say, you're excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Because if it, I let myself get in my own head and I'm nervous, then I will get a stress rash. Yeah. Um, and that helped quite a lot when I was doing the Apprentice um, final. Mm. Um, so obviously you presenting in front of 400 industry experts. I hadn't done any public speaking since the carol service when I was about 12. So I was like, oh my God. And obviously the producers want you to be nervous because yeah. then it's a storyline. So the cameras were in my face. So were like, are you nervous? Big thing this. This is the biggest thing you'll probably do. Like 400 people, industry experts, like all grilling you. No. And I was like, hmm. I'm quite excited, really, inside, shitting Dying. myself. But it's all just, yeah, you can't show weakness on yeah, that show. Yeah, you just got to keep going. And that made me grow up really fast, though, which makes me a little bit sad sometimes because I'm like, yeah. but then I did have a really good childhood, so I'm not that sad about it. But I do think, like, I was 22 and you thrust into that mm. and I didn't really get to live, like, the 
like glitz and glam of like yeah. what you're shown that the apprentice is like and a lot of TV shows they are like you're going to red carpet events and all of that and I got invited to them but I actually ended up saying no to a lot of them because mm. I was actually trying to um get my business like into stores and retail yeah. and all of that so um yeah the, the one thing that I'd maybe go back and do differently is to say yes to more like things that were gonna be long-lasting experiences yeah. like going to like um big movie premieres and whatever. Do you um, think you'd have known what was right though at the time? No, 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 no. Not yeah. at 22 as well. Like I'm 27 now. Like I know myself a lot more. Yeah. So yeah, so it's hindsight's a fab thing, isn't it? Mm, definitely, definitely. So it's good though that you went in at a young age because now you can look back and yeah. you put yourself in at the deep end, you know what I mean? When you were... Absolutely. A, baby. a little baby, 22. 22. I know. I loved it though. It was I really fun. That. Right, I'm going to try and stick to these questions because we will know that <laughs> yeah. I'll just go off. Okay, what advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs, even mm -hmm. young aspiring entrepreneurs, because you started young as well? Yeah, I would say don't see age as a barrier to success. Yeah. Um, use other people's underestimating of you to fuel your fire. Yeah. Um, that's what I've always done on my year of The Apprentice, a lot of people would ask my age um, and then they'd kind of write me off a little bit. So they'd be like, yeah. oh, she's 22. She's not really a like a serious contender. Yeah. And I saw it change in them. Um, but it's just testament that it doesn't really matter. Like, And you've got to use your naivety sometimes to your advantage. I think Definitely. sometimes when you're younger, you've not got that calculated edge that you've got when you're a bit older. Mm. And you're a lot more... Um, you're a lot more accustomed to taking risks. Like yeah. I have to now, I've always been a risk taker, but I do have to force myself to take risks more often now that I'm a bit older. Yeah. And I do think when I was younger, I used to fear my mortality less. Now I'm a bit more like, oh, like a bit more going towards yeah. things with trepidation. So I have to fight that actually, because it's, it's a weird feeling to actually be a little bit um, hesitant to take risks. Mm. I am the epitome. I'm the poster girl of risk taking. Of risk -taking. Um, and I, and I do think that, um, my advice would all center around like just being a bit more bold, yeah. just really reclaiming, um, you know, marketing messages as well, for instance, like being bold with, if you're setting up a business, like not going down the cautious vanilla route. Mm. One of my, um, one of my branding, um, people, they've just, released a new campaign and it says and they're a design agency yeah. and it says we can't wait to get in your briefs and obviously like that provokes a reaction it's tongue-in-cheek it's yeah. a double entendre I love that. and I love stuff like that it's yeah. just like yes um so just be bold go for it it's memorable provoke yeah. a reaction get people talking about you because that is a snowball effect of being word of mouth and people are speaking about you yeah so yeah take risks be bold and don't let age be a barrier to success what do you think encourage you to take as many risks as you have now? I think I'm here for the plot. I'm here for the story. Yeah. I know that we've got a finite period on this earth. And I just think, why not make your story the most interesting story yeah. it can be? And I think that that intrinsically motivates me to take all the risks that I've ever taken. And I think that that needs to, there's an element of, um, I think everyone should be told like, that you are going to die. And I know this sounds morbid, but I don't think it is. Like, as soon as you realise that, you will live your life differently. Like, it's so true. Yeah. And I just think, like, why are we all swanning around like we've got forever to live? Like, we, we haven't. Don't. We really haven't. And then, no. and so many people get depressed by this and like, oh, that's so depressing. And I'm like, how is it? It's yeah. really not. Like, no. I do so many things. I risk loads of stuff. Like, um, like when I was younger and like obviously again now and it's all like based on that premise that I'm like trying to make my story the best there the best. is mm. do you know what though it's good though because you can as you get older you'll always have them stories so you mentioned something before about stress mm. um, and everyone throwing the word stress yeah. around we've been speaking about this this week mm. that it's become not okay to feel stressed yeah it's become not okay on social media that the moment that you feel stressed yeah that's a bad thing and then that's mm. when people say that they feel depressed and things but it's also normal to be stressed and anxious yeah what's your view on that yeah I think it is normal to be stressed and anxious I think there's like a fine line mm. um because I've actually contributed probably in a negative way this is me being self-aware yeah. over the years to like hustle culture hustle yeah. porn I have like 
Yeah. Like sleep when you're dead. Like a lot more back then. And now I'm trying to rewrite the narrative yeah. that, um, you know, you've got to work smart, not harder. Mm. Um, so I, it's hard because you kind of, we're taught not to show weakness. Yeah. But also in the same breath, it's like, don't show weakness, but also, you know, um, yeah. like champion that it's okay to be stressed. So it's it's a really difficult playing field to navigate through I just yeah. think stress is the the word stress is overused like but I think I like um anxiety like depression all of those things like is not spoken about enough and yeah. um and I'm really extroverted still sometimes I'll get a little bit of like anxiety when it comes to social events or whatever which yeah. no one would ever even think yeah. um but I do think that a lot of it comes from our parents sometimes because they're from a different generation yeah. of not talking about their feelings and about being stressed or um, anxious or um, depressed. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, like, yeah, my my parents, that's, they they would struggle to actually see those as real things. Yeah. Whereas they are, because we live and breathe them. Mm. Um, so I think there's still a lot more to be done in the entrepreneur depression, anxiety space. Yeah, I completely agree. Because that's a little bit more niche. Mm. Um, but there's such a correlation there. Yeah. Um, and I do think that we need to to just accept that when you are a business owner, you are going to get, you, you probably are going to get all of those things, yeah. maybe at once as well, yeah. an amalgamation yeah. of things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there needs to be maybe like some form of like a, because I don't think there is anything, is there, of like groups or something where you don't, it's not a networking event in that you're not going to talk about business. You're going to talk about maybe like the stresses of business yeah. and all of the thing, the the negative things or like, like just to be around. Mechanism yeah, group. exactly. Like a group for everyone because there isn't, there isn't. I think that that would be really good because I go to therapy and a lot of the time that is a, a, a way for me to just output all mm. of those things that I would probably do in a group yeah. setting. Um, and that really helps, t to yeah, be fair. I'm a big advocate really, for therapy. We should do that. We should, absolutely. We should I think that's a really good idea because I put something up the other day on social media and it was like, we only share with you what we mm. want you to say. We don't share the negatives. Yeah, no, I and never there do more actually. Negatives. Yeah, there are. Yeah. I actually feel, whenever whenever I talk about this, I always feel really guilty because I'm like, oh, like I'm doing the thing that I hate when people do, which is where they only post the shiny yeah. things. I do try and post sometimes like, oh, I've had a shit day or whatever. Yeah, um, but you don't want it to reflect negatively on yeah, your business as well. So oh, it's kind of like it's a catch-22. I do, yeah. But I, and I do think 90% of the time, like I'm always, I'm a very high energy person all the time. Yeah. Um, but still I have those days where I just want to go off social media because I've had I'm a bad day. So I should probably own, say that, yeah. Moment. I think you touched on hustle culture before. Mm. What are your view on, views on hustle culture at the moment then? I think it's a lot less prevalent than it used to be. I think yeah. LinkedIn was bad for it. So I took a LinkedIn break. Yeah. I was like, whoa, like LinkedIn got very clickbaity, yeah. like double tap to make the ta trampoline bounce and all of this. And I was just like, oh, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. Yeah. Shan't be going on LinkedIn for a while. So I've not actually used LinkedIn for a while now um, because of that. Mm moved away but I'm quite good at like when I see that a platform is getting a bit toxic in a specific area I will pull myself back pull off back it, from it. Um, and I'll be quite intentional with what I go on yeah. um, so I think that there's um, it's definitely a lot better um, than it used to be yeah. I think it was like around the area when Stephen Bartlett's podcast first came out and he was doing his solo episodes yeah. I think he and he would probably admit to this, he contributed a little bit to like hustle culture. Like um, I'm recording this at 3 a.m. because, you know, yeah. all of that. Like it's, it is harmless, but when it's kind of taken as the law by young, impressionable entrepreneurs, yeah. then um, that's when it becomes a little bit, um, a definitely, little bit more definitely. high risk. I did, I did hear on one of his podcasts, it was like, I think something to do with it, he'd been the gym at like, it was something like 3 a.m. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's enough time in. in the day. Exactly. Like, yeah. There is not enough time in the day. I'm asleep. Yeah. I'm not in the gym and I've not trained. Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, the um, something that's helped me recently, actually, and it was um, the biggest, what was it? Oh, yeah. The, the biggest productivity hack yeah. that's backed by science and it's sleep. Literally. Literally. So that is the thing that I prioritize now above anything. Yeah. Because if you don't get enough sleep, 
you're not going to be able to do all the things that you want to do. You're not going to be looking your best. You're not going to be feeling your best. You're not going to be able to give your best. Yeah. So whenever I actually make a decision now, whether it's the gym or sleep, I will always choose sleep. Sleep over it. Like it has to just come above anything. Yeah. Um, so that is the biggest productivity hack backed by science and it's often forgotten. Yeah. Um, and that does not marry well to hustle culture, which is telling you not to sleep. So whenever I try and um, see anything that's like hustle culture or anything to re related to that, I just think, well, actually, who's yeah. the real winner? Because I know the real yeah. Uh, productivity hack backed by science yeah and so it's that's the simplest thing as well simple free yeah so yeah simple as that so whenever anyone sees anything like that just remember that actually sleep. that's not yeah that's just not go to sleep truth. yeah go turn sleep off, turn it off sleep. absolutely yeah well another thing that I actually love about you which we're really similar in is that you're so close to your mum and dad yeah I see you post things about your dad yeah oh he He's is literally cute. the cutest what would you say to your dad right now um, he's not very good at like, when I say nice things about him, <laughs> he'd just be like, mm. like, he doesn't like uh, compliments and neither do I, to be fair. I get that from him. Like, it's obviously nice when people say nice things about you, but he's always like, ugh. Cringe. And same, same with me. Um, but he's just taught me that risk is a really good thing. Like he yeah. is a risk taker and I've seen that as I've grown up over the years. So I think that that's always been in me. Yeah. Um, like he's taken risks and they've paid off and he's taken risks and they've not paid off. And I've yeah. seen them both play out both of those scenarios. So I think that that's been really inspiring over the years. And just like seeing all the things that he's sacrificed, like he doesn't really have, like this is going to make him sound like a bit of a loner, but he doesn't really have any friends <laughs> yeah. because he's given that up for business and family yeah. because he's not had the time and something's had to give. And for him, it's like friends. It's like yeah. that circle. So we are his circle. Mm. You know, when it's like you become the average of the five people you surround yourself with. He hasn't you got are. five. He's only got three. Me, my sister, my mum. So, and he wouldn't change it for the world. And he wouldn't change it. And I really, honestly, I'm just so grateful for the things that he's taught me and, and everything. And all the book recommendations over yeah. the years. Whenever anyone asks me for a book recommendation, best be believing it's come from Neil's with a originally okay so top three books top three books I'm going to do them at the moment because I've read a lot and I've spoken about a lot on social media uh, but I want to give new ones that I've read so that yeah. this is fresh material fresh. for your podcast um so I actually really enjoy Mel Robbins five second rule yeah I think she's becoming quite prominent on social media at the minute but I think it, we're just on the cusp of her being too commercial like I still think she's really really good yeah. and what she's got to say in book form for five second rule is really good um, and with everything I kind of say you know don't take it as the law the whole book if you can get 10% out of a book then that's yeah. a win because some of it you'd be like oh that's a bit like wishy-washy or whatever I don't really yeah, but that you know you think as well, yeah exactly you yeah so that one and then I'll say the almanac of Naval that's really good did you read that not, I would love to say, yeah. I'm, say I'm good at reading. This is what yeah. I want to work on. It was one of my goals this year is to you're be able reading, to sit there. But you're a podcast gal. So. My brain just goes off. Yeah. It does. Fine. I start reading and I'm like, yeah. thinking about dinner. Yeah. I am, but <laughs> Don't that is blame something me, I want to work on. So. But you could even listen to them on Audible. Audible yeah. yeah. So the Almanac of Naval, really, really want them to change the title of that because what a snooze fest. Sorry yeah. to Naval. But wow, like rebrand, honey. Yeah. Um, Maybe you should give him a message. Yeah, I do. Like, hey, uh, his book is amazing. <laughs> as know. well but say I had that book and I was like here we are you're uninspired I can tell yeah. your eyes haven't lit up when I said that one and it's unreal there's so many tidbits and things from there yeah um that I've read that I thought yes I got the monkeys um we're all just monkeys with a plan from that oh uh, okay. okay um it's very good for like little bits of nuggets of information yeah. that one is quite an easy read um so that's number two and then number three um I'd probably say um What's it called? This is a great start. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's called um, Hatching Twitter. So okay. it's the Twitter founder story. Um, oh, because I feel like ev everyone knows what Twitter is, but no one knows yeah. how it actually started. And it's all the perspective, all the perspectives of the different founders involved. Loads of like undercurrents of like betrayal, like, oh, yeah, being pushed out of the business. And it's real life stuff oh, that wow. actually happened. So that one's okay. a really easy one to read because it's like a story, yeah. but it's true. And it's interesting. So yeah, they're the top three. Amazing. Okay, so we're on. Okay. I'm going to come to our last question. Amazing. So if you could go back to the start, is there anything that you would do different? 
Mm, back to the start. Would I do anything different? When I was born, I'll believe. Yeah. Mm, wouldn't have dyed my hair black because then my hair <laughs> wouldn't be thin now. Um, no, I don't think I would. I think you have to do everything and you've just got to back yourself in everything that you do because you wouldn't be where you are now if you hadn't have gone down that exact path. Yeah. It's like that. sliding doors, the film. Like every moment is pivotal. And I'm a big yeah. believer in moments. Um, and I think that everything that I've done I can, like, even the mistakes that I've made, never a mistake, always a lesson. Always a lesson. And, you know, the person that I was in uni, like, didn't like that person at all. But I look back and I think, but I learned so much from that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say that I've done everything with my chest. Yeah, and because you didn't like the person you were then, mm. that made you then go travelling. Exactly. To the yeah, to rectify it. Absolutely. Yeah. So everything that I've done has all been part of the story and it's made for an interesting yeah. An interesting life thus far. It's brought us together. It has indeed. Here's to the next 27 years. 100%. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.